And so this morning, I have a message that I want to share with you. My message today is God is working. Amen. God is working. You have to see that God is working in you. You see, God has put you on this planet Earth, not so that you somehow make it have all the struggles, all the difficulties and challenges. Listen, God put you on this planet Earth. Yes, you will have struggles, you will have difficulties. But remember, God is with you all the time. Amen. And he is working. Sometimes we do do not realize we get so busy with our jobs, with our our lives, with with the stress that, that, that life brings at times, especially when you live in a big city like Nairobi. Listen, God is with you. God is with your children. God is with your family. Whatever dreams you have, whatever aspiration, whatever desire God puts in your heart, if you will trust him, he will bring you out. He will do great things in your life. You can trust him with your life. You can trust him with your children. You can trust him with your future. So take courage today. Be reminded that whatever you are doing, God is with you. And he is working behind the scenes. He is doing miracles for you so that you will have a life that he intended it to be. Amen. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about one of the, pro- one of the prophets who, who was living a long time ago. His name was Habakkuk. Say Habakkuk. It almost sounds like Hab a cook, right? Some of you already know how to cook. By the way, I do not know if you have. Do you have Ugali here? Oh my gosh, I love Ugali. I never had Ugali, but now I, I, I had when I was in Tanzania, and I loved it. I thought, my gosh, I've been missing out this, this, uh, this, this greatest staple. And I tell people around the world, I said, I love Africa, I love the food, I love the culture, I love the people. But I'll tell you, some of you are very, very good cook. I wish I could come to your house. <laughs> and have dinner with, in your house. But I know some of you are not. But, but if you don't know how to cook, just have a cook. Okay? So the name of the prophet today we want to talk about, his name was Habakkuk. He lived a long time ago in the, in the seventh century before Christ. He was prophesying to the people of, of Judah. He was prophesying to the people um, that were living at that time. And all around them, there were a lot, a lot of different enemies. Amen? And so this is what Habakkuk, he's, he's, he was complaining. It was supposed to be his prayer, but you know, he has this dialogue with God. Do you have a dialogue with God? Do you talk to him? Do you pray to him? I know we all do, right? But sometimes in our busyness, we forget that if we just talk to him, you know, he will hear us. But here he was, Habakkuk, his, his prayers was more like a complaint. He says, the teachings are weak. The justice never comes. Evil people gain while good people lose. The judges no longer make decisions. You see, we are living at a time when all these struggles that is going on, it seems like every day they they manufacture new crisis, right? I recently, I saw on television, you had had some, some challenges here in your country. And I tell you, the world is facing all kinds of challenges. And we wonder, you know, where is God? Listen, God is right here with us. He's not far away from us. He is right here with us. Today, he is right here with us in the house of God. When you're in your house, he is right there with you in your house. When you lay down, he is right there sitting on your bed. He's in your house. He's in your kitchen. He's in your workplaces. You have to be very God aware in your life. And so Habakkuk, he says, God, I am living at a time when there is so much injustice in the world today. And we see this all when you watch television, when you watch news, or when you're on your social media, you find there's so much of challenges, so much of uh, cruelty, so much of uh, difficulties people are faced with today in our world. And we say, God, where are you? So he had this, he had this complaint before God. Now, Habakkuk, the name of his, the meaning of his name, Habakkuk, is somebody who carries burden in his heart. And he had a burden for the people of Judah. And sometimes we all have burden in our, in our heart. Sometimes we are burdened about our family. Sometimes we are burdened about our spouses. Sometimes we are, we are burdened about our children, our sons and our daughters. Listen, I know we carry burdens in our hearts, but we can cast our burdens on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he cares for us. Amen. 
So here you find Habakkuk, he says, God, why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoings, distractions, and violence before me? And then the Lord says, this is what the Lord answers. See, every time we talk to God, he will answer you. And so he answers. He says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am doing something in your days that you would not believe even if we are told. God says, I'm going to do something great. Go to the next slide. God says, I'm going to do something great in your lifetime. That if I told you, you would not even believe. Has God done something for you? Can you remember something good that God has done for you? I remember when I was 11, six years old. I was six years old back in India. I was sick and I was dying. I had to take shot one in the morning, one at night. Not only on my shoulder, but in my back. And the doctors gave me six months to live. The doctor said I would not live, Guinea Anderson would not live more than six months. And I had to take shots every day, two times a day. And here I was, just six years old, did not know nothing about life. And the condition of my body was not very well. But you know what? While all the people were praying for me, one night Jesus came into my room. Jesus came into my room and the glory of God filled my room with bright light. And Jesus came and he touched me and I was instantly healed from that sickness. And you know what? It's been now many, many years. I have not been sick ever since then. Now I have had a little bit of cold. I have had a little bit of you know, uh, pain in my body because with all my travels that I do every year. But listen, I walk in divine health. Because Jesus has touched me and he has healed me. And I know that God has done things for you. When your child was sick, when you cried out to God and you said, God, would you heal my child? Would you heal my spouse? Would you heal my son? And God healed them. Or when you were broke, when you did not have any money to pay a rent or to, to pay a, a school fees for your child. How you cried out to God and God provided for you. He always comes through, Amen. Sometimes you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, he, God's gonna fail you, but listen, He will never, never fail you. Amen. He will always, always bring you out. And that's what He says right here. God says, Look to the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. The video I showed today, to, this morning to you, I want you to know what God is doing in our world today. Because on the television, on the news, they will not tell you what God is doing. And I, let me tell you this. The biggest thing that is happening in our world today. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Today, Jesus is building his church. You are sitting at a local church that Jesus has built. Amen. He is building us. It's not just the building, but it's the people. It's the people of God. Look at our church. It's completely full here. Amen. And then we're going to have another service. And we're going to have another service. We're going to get used to having 10 services. Some of the countries I travel, they have 12 or 15 services in one day because they cannot accommodate all the people. Now, last 40 years, I've spent a lot of time ministering, especially in Asia. All over India, all over China, all over Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And I've seen mighty miracles of God. I've seen dead people People that have died for a couple of days, God raised them up. I have seen blind people, Jesus opening up their eyes. I've seen deaf ear open, blind eyes open, dumb, deaf and dumb. God touches and heals. I see cancers many, many times. We see cancers completely healed by the power of God. This is God's doing. God says, I will do something great in your lifetime that you would not believe if I ever told you. Say, I'm a, I'm a believer. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Amen. You have to be a believer. You have to believe the report. You know, the doctors, sometimes, we, sometimes people get sick and, you know, thank God for doctors. And I have many very good friends that are medical doctors. I wanted to be a doctor. But, but thank God for the doctors because they kind of keep us alive until we get our complete healing. Amen. But sometimes you go to the doctors and they may give you a bad report and you may have been diagnosed with a sickness or a disease. Now listen, sickness and disease do not come from God. 
The devil infects us with all kinds of sicknesses or sometimes we live very carelessly and all kinds of things show up in our bodies. That's why you have to take care of your body. You are the temple of the living God. Amen. So you have to take care of your body and to eat well, you have to rest well. And above all, you have to have the word of God and know what the word of God talks to you about. About the things of God. Amen. About, about your life. Amen. So God says, I will watch and see and be utterly amazed. For I'm going to do something great in your lifetime that you would not believe if you were told you. Expect God to do great things in your life. Amen. Expect God to move. If you have not seen nothing from God in recent months, in recent days, you have not seen a miracle. You have not seen a, a, a miracle in your life. Listen, you can ask God and pray this way. God, would you do a miracle for me? And ask, ask him, what kind of miracles are you looking for? If it's a financial miracle, tell him, God, I need a financial breakthrough. I need a miracle. Listen, he will do a miracle for you. Amen. He will do a miracle for you. If you need a healing, listen, if you ask him, he will heal you. If you need peace in your mind or if you need direction, if you ask God, he will give it to you. God says, in your days, I will do great things. Let me tell you this. Today, in our world, God is doing great things. He's changing the hearts of the kings and the queens. He is raising up nations and he, the other nations are falling down because they have forsaken God. Listen, people here in Kenya, you are people of God. God has raised you up as a, as, as a nation that is an example to the nations all around Africa. You are a nation that is an example to the people around the world. God has raised you up to be people that honors God, that lifts the name of God. And you will see mighty things happen in your land. Amen. The third slide. The third slide. So Habakkuk, you know, he con con continues with his, with his complaints to God. He says, Lord, you have chosen the Babylonians to punish people. Your eyes are too good to look at evil. You cannot stand to see those who do wrong. So how can you put up with these evil people? How can you be quiet when the wicked swallow up the people? Who, are they better than they are? So Habakkuk, he is having this dialogue. And yet it seems like a complaint to God. God, don't you see all the things that is happening with people around us? You see these wicked people, they are destroying all the people. And we are seeing today, in our world today, there is every, all kinds of things, you know, in the, especially in the Western world. I do not know so much here in Kenya. I came here to learn. So I want to learn more about what God is doing in your nation. But I'll tell you this. They are coming up with all kinds of things. You know, recently we had this COVID. You know, it was all manufactured. People manufactured it in the labs. And uh, it all spread. And of course, they lied. And five or seven million people died because of all of these things. But listen, there are a lot of people that are not so nice people. They are wicked people. They are run by the devil. And there is always a fight between the God and the devil. And we know who is the winner, who is the victor, amen? It's God Almighty who, is the, who, is, who has conquered the devil. When Jesus died for us on the cross, he conquered the devil and sin and hell on the cross, amen, for you and for me. So Habakkuk, he is complaining, God, don't you see what all the weakness that is going on? I understand sometimes, I don't know about you, but I have prayed the same, same prayers, you know, I wake up early in the morning, sometimes at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning. I have so many responsibilities and I realize that if I do not take time to pray about things, I will not have, in the, in the morning, I will not have time during the day to really seek God. So this has been part of my life to wake up early in the morning. Now some of you need 8 hours of sleep. But some of you, you do not sleep very much because we want to seek God. We want to talk to him. He wants to talk to you. And so in my house, I have this, this comfortable couch and I sit there and I study my Bible and I pray every day. Whenever I'm back at home, even when I'm traveling, living like last night, I woke up. The, I woke up at 1.30 this morning. I do not know why because maybe I was thinking about ministering today. And I just stayed up the whole night. 
And I started praying. I said, God, show me what your people need here today. And God began to speak to me. And God says, I will just tell the people here in the church today that God is with you. He loves you. He is for you. He's going to help you. Whatever thing you are believing him for, he is with us. And he will help us. And so when you are pressed with all kinds of difficulties and challenges in life, listen, you have to remember that God is with you. And God is fighting your battles. Amen. In, in Habakkuk chapter 2, this is not in, the, in, our, uh, in our slide, but I'll read the scripture. It says Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. It says, Habakkuk says, I will stand at my watch and stand and station myself on the rampant. And I will look and see what he will say to me. And what answers I am given to this complaint. Basically Habakkuk is saying, I'm going to wait on God. To find an answer. Sometimes you have to wait on God. Sometimes if you are in your decisions that you need from God. If you are believing God for a future. A lot of you young people. Listen. If you are believing God a future and a, and a, and a direction. Wait on God. He will show you what plans and future he has for you. All I can say it's a good plan. All I can say it's a great plan God has for you. Follow God. Follow his word. Follow the Holy Spirit that he has given to you. And he will guide you to the most amazing life that you could ever dream of. Habakkuk, he says, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch what God would do to me. What answer he's going to give to me. Listen, God has an answer for you and me. Whatever needs you have today. If you're, your struggles, I know some, if you're a man, I know you have struggles we all have struggles, different struggles that we have. And God knows what, what those struggles are. But you have to understand that you are not here alone. That the almighty God is watching over you. He wants to talk to you. You are a child of the most high God. He wants to help you. But you have to receive his help. You have to wait. You have to make time for him to listen to what he wants to say to us. Amen. Then God says to Habakkuk, next slide. He says, write down the revelation and make it plain on the tablet. So the herald may run with it. But Habakkuk, God is saying to Habakkuk, write down the vision. See, in our life, we need to have a vision where we want to go. In our life, we need to know what you want to see happen in your life, in your family. If you are at your job or at your business, you have to know where you want to be in your business. Amen. You cannot stay the same where you were last year. This year, your business has to come up higher. This year, at your job, you have to have promotion so that you can continue to thrive in the place that God has placed you. Amen. You need to be in a place and among people that love you, that believe in you, that open up the right doors for you. Some of you, I know you are praying for your children, your sons and your daughters. Listen, when you pray, when you pray, God will open the right doors. I'll tell you my story. You know, my background, my, my family background was very, very humble. We had a very humble beginning. We had nothing. When we were born, we literally had nothing. But I had my father with four sons. And my father was very sick and he himself was dying. But he would be on his knees and he would pray this prayer. He says, he would pray, God, make my sons great. He prayed the same prayer for 30 years, not knowing what God was doing in our hearts, in our lives. God was preparing us. All of my brothers, all of the sons, we rose up. We had our, the best education. We had the, we had the best opportunity in to go to the best universities and colleges. And God has done great things because of the father, my, my dad who prayed for us from a small little village in India. Listen, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what kind of background you have. It doesn't matter what name you, you have. God has put you on this planet earth because he wants to do great things for each one of you. When you have God, you have got great future. You can trust him with everything he has for you. 
But you have to surrender your life to him. You have to seek him and you have to cry out to him. You have to say, God, I need you. God, without you, I can do nothing. If this is the cry of your heart, God will do great things for you. If you will be a person who is thankful, who is grateful for the things that he has already done for you, and you see the hand of God and you keep saying him, God, do more. God, trust me more. God, help me more. God, put me in the right place among right people. He will do great things in your life. Even coming to Kenya this time, I, when, I, when I booked my flights, when I booked my hotel, I did not know one person in Kenya. But here I am. I'm with Bishop. If you know Bishop Kimani, you know everybody. In, <laughs> amen. You know everybody in Kenya. You know everybody in Africa. Come on. So I am so blessed to meet Bishop. I am so blessed to meet First Lady, Miss Alice. You know, they are such wonderful people. They love you so much. They are every day, week after week, they are praying for you. They are giving, the, they have given their lives to build up and raise up this church. And not just here, many other churches. Listen, you are sitting in a dream center. You are sitting in a place where dreams comes into reality. Amen. And if God has done it for me, if God has done it for Bishop and his family, God will, is doing it right now for you. Amen. He is no respecter of person. He loves us very much and he will help us. Can you say amen to it? Yeah. Amen. Write down the vision. Make it plain. Write it down. Because if you don't write it down, you know, you do not know what to expect from God. I remember as a young man, I was like 16, 17 years old. I was back in India. I was so young and I was dreaming about going and preaching the gospel. And I remember I was in a very big bungalow and I was praying and I had never had a vision before. But I saw the, the world, the, the globe was coming out of the ocean. And I saw the hand of God in the ocean and, and the world was turning. And it was in the daytime. I, I could almost see it was so clear. And I saw millions of people coming out of the world and going towards heaven. And I, and I saw myself with Jesus leading the people of God towards heaven. And I just did not know. I was so, so young. And it was so vivid. And I wrote it down. I wrote it down in a yellow piece of paper. And even as I'm sharing this testimony with you, I'm reminded how God gave that vision to me. And you know, it's been 30 years, it's been 40 years. I have traveled around the world over 120 different times. And I've seen the hands of God. I've seen the miracles of God into all the nations in every continent. Now you are sitting over here today. You might be listening online. Listen, God has placed you here. And whatever dreams that he has placed you, maybe to go to another nation or maybe to, to, go, to, maybe to go to another city to build up a business or to have a, have a better job or to have a better future. Listen, whatever dream God has given to you, write it down. Know what it is. Ask God for, for, for clarity so that you can see it. And as you do life, as you continue to seek him and grow in God, as you connect yourself, your life with this house, with this church or with the church that's close to your home. Listen. God will do great things. You will see those dreams come to pass. Today I have, seen, I have seen all these nations, continents open up to us. It was like a dream. I do not even, listen, I do not even have money to take a bicycle, to ride a bicycle. I do not have money to take a bus fare, to go to another town. But here I am today, almost every week, traveling on the plains into the nations of the world. If God did it for me, how much more he will do it for you. So beautiful people of God. So handsome people of God. God loves you so much. He's not far away from us. He is close to us. He is close to us. He is close to our children. The dreams that you have for your children. Listen. You are praying for them. God is going to put them in the right place among right people. Your children will be mighty in the kingdom of God. Your children will be mighty in the kingdom of God. Their children will do greater things than you have ever done. They will go further than you have ever been to. Amen. That's what we pray. That's what we believe God for. Amen. But write it down. 
You know, make it a habit to write down things, you know, so that you can remember when God answers your prayers. Amen. Because when you, when you really seek God, when you ask him for, to do different things for you, you will be amazed to see what God, is, God has done in your life. Amen. Let's go, to the, let's, let's go to the next slide. You know, it talks about, it says in chapter 2, verse 4, Habakkuk crying out to God. And here again he says, the evil nation Babylon is very proud of itself. It is not living as it should. But those that are righteous, they will live by trusting in him. In other translation, it says, the just shall live by faith. You know, in our world today, we have so much of unrighteousness. We have so much injustice. And when things are difficult, when things are, there's so many challenges, so many different things that are coming up, how you and I are supposed to live. The Bible says the just people, the people of God, those that are justified by faith, you know, you, what qualifies you to be a people of God? We are justified by, by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? God is justified here as if we have never sinned. As if we have never sinned. He put his righteousness over us. He has justified us. He has forgiven our sins. And he has justified us. And so we, the people of God, we are to live by faith. When you do not know how to live or what to do next week, next month, next year, you can trust in God. Amen. The righteous people of God will live by faith. It's so important that we live by faith. See, when you live by faith in God, and I know you're a people of great faith. I love the sincerity of your hearts. And God always honors sincerity. You don't have to know everything. People try to, you know, make all different points of faith. But we have to be just sincere in our hearts. It's okay to learn different points and different things. But listen, if we are sincere in our hearts, and if we put our faith in God, put it out there, God will do great things in our lives. I remember, I remember as a young man, you know, I used, to, I used to dream about, you know, having a family. Because I did not have a family growing up. You know, my mother passed away when I was very young. I was just two years old. And not having a family, you know, a proper family, it was always my dream. To have a wife, to have children. It's like, how can this be? And I was just so young, you know, I was traveling so much, I did not have much money, but I had my God with me. I had my God with me. And God is so kind. He brought the most beautiful people, the wife that I could ever dream of in my life. We were friends, we, we met in Hong Kong, and we got married in New York, and rest is history. And if God, being so good to me, to give me a beautiful family, to give me children, and today our sons and daughters, you know, they are growing up so beautifully. They are all serving God, and it's such an honor for me to lead our family in the ways of God. I know you have a dream in your heart. We all have dreams, amen? Young people. You have to have big dreams. Where are the young people? Where are the young people here? Come on. Young people, where are you? I want to see you. Yes, sir. I see Bishop lifting up his hand. Young bishop. We have. But all the young people, come on. You have to have dreams. Dreams of God. God will take you to the nations of the world. You cannot stay in the shallow water. And pedal in the shallow water. You have to go into the deep waters with God. You have to experience God. You have to know the God who created you. So launch into the deep. Get away from your pettiness and fearfulness and, and things that will take you away from God. You have to trust God with big things. Amen. Some of you are in business. Listen, you have to trust God with big things from God. Ask, dare to believe God for bigger things. Dare to believe God to say, God, give me this nation of Kenya. Dare to believe God, say, God, give me all of Africa. Or dare to believe God, God, give me the world and I'm going to go and preach this glorious gospel to every nation on this earth. Amen? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to the young man right over here. Come on. I'm talking to the young man right next to you. Come on, young people. We have to believe God. We have to dare ourselves to do great things for God. Amen? Because God is with us. He will do great things in us. You see, God has healed you. 
Remember God has healed you, how he cried out to God and how he healed you, how he delivered you from dangers and harms, how he brought you out from Corona. So many people lost their life, but here you are. God has protected you and he kept you safe. Because you're alive, that means God has more things for you. He wants to do greater things in your life. He has favored you. He has promoted you. And he has saved you from all kinds of dangers and harms. Harm. So remember that if you will trust in God, if you will allow him to continue to work in your life, God will do greater things. See, Habakkuk, then he cries out to God. Let's go to the next slide. He says, Lord, Okay, he talks about, the, he talks about the glory of God. You see, Habakkuk, you know, he saw after all of the, the complaints he had, he had the answers, he had the faith in his heart. He says, God, just as the water covers the sea, people everywhere will know the Lord's glory. I want to say this to you. The glory of God has been poured out into the nations of the world. The glory of God. Sometimes we, we, we sing, show me your glory. Amen. See, the glory is right here with us. Where Jesus is, his glory is there in the presence. Your, he, God's glory is on your faces. When I see your face, I see the glory of God. How beautifully he has created you. Some of you, you need to, you know, you need to look yourself at mirror. And you need to smile and say to yourself, look at me. I could have been already dead and gone, but now look at me. I have the glory of God. I have the presence of God in my life. God is in my heart. He lives in my house. Wherever I go, I now carry his glory. That's what, that's what Habakkuk is saying. The earth shall be filled with the glory and the knowledge of God. As we travel into all these nations, that's what we see. We see the glory of God being poured into the nations of the world. And then we go to the last slides. Let's go to the last slides. And this, this is what we, we find. Habakkuk, you know, he was such a man that wanted to talk to God and communicate with God. And this is what he says. Even God, I have heard of your fame. The last slide was there, okay. It says, it's Habakkuk, he says, I will rejoice in the Lord and I'll be joyful in the God of my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He, he, had a, he had a song in his heart. He says, there may be no olives growing and no food growing in the fields. There may be no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the barns. But I will, be, I will still be glad in the Lord and I will rejoice in God, my Savior. Some of you, maybe your answer has not come yet. But let that new song come from your heart. Just like we sang, worship leaders, will you just come on up here? Just for a moment, please. I want to pray and I want to just close this service. I believe God's going to do new things in your heart. Let that new song arise in your heart. Let there be hope planted in your heart today. Let God be God in your life. Let your heart say, God, you have done great things for me in the past. I ask you that you would do greater things in my life today. Would you do that for me? Would you ask God for this? Would you ask God to do greater things in your life? God is working behind the scenes, but unless you get hungry, unless you become desirous, unless you become that person who says, God, I hunger and thirst for you, things will not happen for you. But Habakkuk, he got it. He says, God, even though I do not see the fruits right now, I am just trusting in you, and I know that you will continue to do great things in my life. Would you stand to your, to your feet just for a moment, please? Let's all lift up our hands before the Lord. Would you? Just lift up your hands. I do not know what your needs are here today. But listen, you are standing here in the presence of God. You are in a place of great love. You are in a place of acceptance. You are in a place where God moves by his Holy Spirit. He is with us. His Holy Spirit has been talking to you. He's been talking to you. He's been speaking into your heart. Allow God this morning, whatever your needs are, if it is need for salvation, if you have never given your heart to Jesus, if you have never given your heart to Jesus, this is a good time for you to 
give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you might say, Pastor, I used to be so on fire for God, but I have gotten cold. My relationship with God has become cold and lukewarm. I feel a distance from God. If that is you, would you lift up your hand just for a moment, please? Because I want to pray for you. I see your hand. If you need to rededicate your life, would you lift up your hand just for a moment, please? I want to pray for you. Okay. Well, if you have other needs, if you need healing, would you lift up your hands if you need healing in your body? Lift it up way up high. If you need healing in your body, lift it up way up in the, up in the air. Okay. Now I want you to leave your seat. If you need healing, would you come in the front here, please? Just for a moment. We've got prayer partners here. They're going to pray for you. Prayer partners, would you come in the front, please? I got all this. Those of you that need healing, would you just come up in the front? I strongly believe that when we lay our hands and pray for people, listen, we have seen all kinds of miracles. And today you can have your miracles. It doesn't matter what kind of sickness you have had. Would you come up? If you need healing in your body, come in the front. God does not want you to leave this place in pain or in sickness. You're in the healing center. You're in the house of God. Come on. Have somebody pray with you. Find somebody to pray with you. Lift up your hands. Expect, expect a healing. Lift up, lift up your hands to the Lord. If there is anybody, you need a financial breakthrough. In this house, if you need a financial breakthrough, would you lift up your hands, please? Lift it up, way up high. You need a financial miracle, you need a financial breakthrough. Lift it up before the Lord. I truly believe that God is sending a financial breakthrough for each one of you. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we just ask you that you would heal your people here today. In the name of Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the, from the dead will quicken the mortal bodies of those that are in pain, sicknesses, Lord God. Father, we pray that, Lord, that every sickness in this house will be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for touching and healing your people. Every pain, every sickness lives our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. God, you're a miracle working God. God, you're our healer. Jesus, you died not only for our sins, but you died for our sicknesses and our diseases on the cross. Thank you for your healing. I receive your healing. I receive your healing in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray for all those that lifted up their hands for a financial breakthrough. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Father, those that are lifting up their hands for a financial miracles and a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, we say that your people will prosper in the name of Jesus. This week, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that things will turn around for them. Lord, they will have a better job. They will have better promotion. In the name of Jesus, those that have been struggling to pay their bills, Father, I thank you for sending them the breakthrough, financial breakthrough they need in the name of Jesus. God, let there be tens of thousands, tens of thousands, of the money that people need in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're a supernatural God. Just as you have given us many, many breakthroughs in our finances, God, you will do the same for your people today. And Lord, they'll be faithful to honor you with their tithes and their givings. Lord, they will not shy away, but Lord, they'll be faithful to bring their tithes and their givings and their offerings into the house of God. Father, thank you. Thank you. For the breakthrough in the name of Jesus, we said, devil, take your hands off our finances. Take your hands off our finances in the name of Jesus. And God, release your favor. Release your favor to be upon our lives, Lord God. Over our jobs, over our, over our businesses in Jesus' name. So that we can continue to prosper and have everything we need for our families in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Father, I speak your blessing upon the people of God in this house. Let each one of your people experience your goodness, experience your power, experience the freedom that you have for us. Let your people, Lord God, be awakened in their hearts, in their spirit, because you are with us. God, we thank you because 
you are working in our lives, in our families. We give you all praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Everybody says, Amen.